Hello and welcome in today's exciting episode. I continue making this jacket. This is actually part two. In part one, I just cut out the fabric and started doing the beading. So there you go, you're all caught up. It's perfect, 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 perfect. Perfect jacket. So I ended part one of the video with me finishing the back half of the jacket was finished. It's just the foundational layer of beading with the big beads and then the medium sized beads. So the second round of beading is all done. I'm not sure whether I'll do small beads in there as well. I probably will along the shoulder line, but I'm not sure if I'll do it on the whole of the jacket. Anyway, so it's done for now and I've left clear all the side lines. So I packed that away carefully and put it to the side and now I have to do the front. As I said, I've got the foundational layer. So the big beads done on this one. I now just have to go along and add all the medium sized beads. So yeah, I'll do that. And I'll just sort of give you little glimpses. So this is the tub. So I divided the beads into half and this is the half for the front. And now again, I'm going to divide it into two halves, one for the left half and one for the right half. And here we go, this is the half for this side. So I just slowly start to bead this. And these, um, the back beads, the larger ones were a little further apart. On the front here, they're a little closer together. I like the ones on the back better because it gives you more scope when there's a little room, more room between each of the big beads. You can sort of, yeah, play around more with your patterns that you do. But I'm going along and I'm, you know, methodically making my way along. At the neckline, I had to take one off and just re-knot it underneath so that the neckline was extra clear for when I machine sew the neckline because there's just going to be so many beads on it by then. It's going to be a little hard to do. So I just cleared that up a little. Once the one side was done then I worked on the other side and this is me just filling in that second side and once that was done I noticed that on the first side I forgot a couple of the sort of horizontal lines here so then I had to go back and fill them in but I'm just going to show you everything first because I'm yeah quite happy with the way that this has turned out. I did use a lot of those um, little round pump orange pumpkin ones with the navy dots on them um, rather than the little orange skulls but I don't know that that's a bad thing. The pumpkin things i they're so specific I think this is mainly be kind of the only tweet I will ever use them on whereas the skulls I can think of like five different tweeds that I could use them with so here we go I finally filled in those last few bits and now it's at the point where I can actually sew the shoulders together like the front and the back together so yeah I left these two where they were and then I got out the back of the jacket and I very very carefully laid it over the top of this so that the right sides were together and I pinned them together at the shoulder line. I also had to pin the underarms and the sides just to keep everything in the correct space while I carried it over to where the sewing machine is. I also turned it over and um, pinned the the center fronts together. So these two flaps here are for the lining and of the left front and the right front. And I just pinned them out of the way. And then I machine sewed the shoulder line. So the top of the sleeves. I didn't sew the under sleeves together because it, there's just too much be beading on here. It will be impossible to turn the sleeves out. I did sew the seam line along here, machine sew the seam line, and I'm just going to hand pin back the, I'll, I'll finish them later, but I had to do those machine lines now. And you can sort of see at the bottom here, I'm going to pin the seam allowance back on each side and then hand stitch the two sides together. But first of all, I have to reinforce the shoulder. So we'll do the upper sleeve bit first. So I just splayed open the jacket so I can work on the whole of the shoulder seam. Well, 
the top um, seam, sleeve seam from the neckline right down to the wrist. And I pinned back the seam allowance so that I can just hand stitch this. It's a little bit tricky because some areas of the outer fabric are plain orange, some are plain navy, and some are a mix of navy and orange. So I'm using a sort of dark thread. So I just had to be careful that you couldn't see it on the outside. So I went along and hand stitched all that down. Now that it's done, I have to reinforce it. So I'm going to lay over a, just a spare piece of netting. I've used the fluoro yellow so that you can actually see what I'm doing. Normally, of course, I'd use a black but I just cut that so that it's long enough to make it to where the neckline seam is going to be and right down to the edge of where the hem will be. And then over that, I put a bit of a spare piece of the outer fabric. This is just going to cushion it and give it a nice shape, the sleeve a nice shape. So instead of it sort of falling with all the weight on the actual seam and that would be a lot of weight because of all this beading. Now that I've pinned this here the weight is going to sort of roll and it's going to be rounded and yeah it will just age better. So the top bit is done but while I have it face down I'm an access to the back of the sleeve I'm going to just fold up the seam allowance here and pin it and then hand stitch it. I'm not going to do the curve yet. I'll do the side and I'll do the under sleeve and then I'll come circle back and I'll clip the curve and do that. But it's more structurally sound to do the under sleeve first and the side and then go back and clip it and do that last bit. Okay, so I've stitched the um, seam allowance back on the under sleeve and the side and you can tell by the lack of pins if nothing else. So then I went and just carefully clipped the backing fabric. I clipped the backing fabric but not the tweed or wool. Tweed and wool they have a different composition to fashion fabrics so yeah I try not to cut into them wherever possible I try not to cut. If it's necessary I do but if it's if you can do your work without further degrading the fabric, the textile, that's always good. So I just cut the structural layer and then sort of massage the the outer fabric into place and then pinned them and went along and carefully hand stitched into place taking one pin out at a time as I went and then I did the back so that was the front and then I did the back as well same method and um, so now it is time now that this side the left side or right side whatever one of the sides is done I still can't tell my left from my right it is time to do the other side so I just sort of have to carefully roll this side up and then turn the whole thing around and work on the other side. Um, if the whole jacket was navy or like one solid colour, I probably would tack this, um, tack that back, the shoulder support system into place. But I'm just going to leave my hat pin sized pins in there. So I moved everything around and now we are working on the second sleeve. And again, you just pin the seam allowance out and then go along and hand stitch one side, then hand stitch the other. Then the next step I did on the first sleeve was to lay down the reinforcements. But the I've pinned them in place with these really, really sharp pins. So instead of having to lean over those massively sharp pins, I'm just going to do the um, fold back and stitch back the seam allowance for the under sleeve and the sides of this sleeve. So I'm doing that now. So it's a slightly different order, but I'm doing it the same way. And um, yeah, just to avoid those stabby stab massive you know hat pin sized pins so the I've done the front and I've done the back so now it is time to get the netting and the 
um, spare bit of fabric and reinforce that sleeve. I also have the neckline, so maybe we'll measure that out first. Because I just don't think it's safe to use the sewing machine on this again. But yeah, I'm just thinking about how deep I'll make the seam. So on the Vogue 7975, as it is such a fitted jacket, you get more mo um, range of movement if you do a deep neckline. So you make the seam allowance bigger. Whereas with the ones that I've just done, um, on the, the one on the left with the white with rainbow fabric and white beading, that one I did a standard seam allowance here, they're at the same level, but I feel like it makes me look like I have small shoulders. Whereas this one is the, um, the deeper seam allowance. You don't really need it for range of movement on such a loose jacket because it's got the dolman sleeves, sort of those back wing almost sleeves rather than the really fitted ones of the Vogue 7975. But I do think the balance of the jacket looks better with a deeper seam allowance at the neckline. If you notice the pearl tip pins around the neckline on when I was working on the front, it's going to result in a neckline like this. So yeah, I think I will um, trim the, that down now. I'll go around and mark it, then stay stitch it, then trim it down, then um, stitch it back. It's easier and safer to do all this structural work while it's face down rather than after I've turned it around. So to do it, what I do, it sounds a little stupid, but you just get one of your little boxes of machine needles and use that to measure it. Yes, the white background was actually just a page out of one of my Lesage books. This is um, a Givenchy gown, vintage Givenchy, but the, uh, the embellishment work is done by Lesage in Paris. It's like the best embellishment house in the world. It, well, in for Paris fashion, Western fashion. And so the bit with the beads can be called beading or embellishment and the bit with embroidery be, can be called embroidery or embellishment. Okay, so I used my little um, sewing machine needle case to mark out the, I just went around and held it to the edge, then pinned a pin, then moved it slightly, then pinned another pin. So this is what I mean. So it was just at a different spot every single time. So this is going to be my neckline. And um, now the next thing I have to do is um, I didn't get the placement of the reinforcement, those two layers, exactly right. So first up, I'll hand stitch this pin line. But then, oh, and this is me just showing you, if you don't want to do such a deep neckline, you can um, sort of turn your pin case sideways and do it that way. But a traditional hem length is 3.8 centimetres or an inch. And um, yeah, that's what this, that's what a, a needle case is. So that's what it is. So I went round and hand stitched this with four um, bits of cotton. I need it to be thick and very visible from the outside because I need to fold that in. I'm not going to fold it yet, but it needs to be visible. So that's why I made it very visible on both sides, my sew line. So now comes the scary part. I've got to cut off all the excess fabric. And so, yeah, just double check that you're sure this is the neckline you want. I know from experience that this is the neckline I want. So I cut it down and I've always wondered if um, on this type of jacket, if you should reinforce the shoulder seams and the back seam. So, uh, you know, I've got dozens of jackets. I can experiment on one. So I've cut, left these bits here so that I'm going to fold them back. And over time, I'm going to see if this ages better than one that's just cut all at the same height. I haven't done it to the center front seams because that would have been too bulky, but the shoulder seams and the center back seam, I think in my, my experience, I think this would make the whole piece stronger. So um, now I just have to move this, um, the reinforcement layers up a scooch and then repin them, which yeah, I just took all, um, all the pins out, move them up, make sure they were lined up properly and then put each one in um, one at a time. So I did that and then it is time to pin back 
So I sort of just held the bit in between my fingers and made sure the white thread was in between, like on the side of the coin, if you get what I mean, rather than on the front or the back. And then, yep, yeah, just put all the pins in. Now it is time to hand stitch it around. You can really see how a machine, like how machine sewing this would have been pretty impossible and it's much better. Although it's slower, it's much better to do this by hand. So now I just have to carefully go along and do this by hand. I didn't know what colour thread to use. I was really confused about that. But I think this turned out really well. I ended up using a combination of a khaki and a bright orange, which sounds hideous and ridiculous. But um, working with tweeds, you get to know that colours aren't colours. They're a mix of a whole bunch of really unlikely colours. And that's how you get the one that you want. So, yeah, I feel like it's it, you, you can't really see the bits that I've done. And that's because of the thread that I used and probably the way that I stitched it. <laughs> I was a slightly more careful than when I was doing that centre back spine seam. So, yeah, I've done half. I couldn't safely do the whole thing at once. So I did, just did one half, then folded away that part of the jacket then and got out this half and then I've pinned them again I'm going to do the get more thread and then I'm going to oh this is me showing you you can't really see if you know what you're looking for you can see where the stitches should probably are but you can't actually see the thread which is a good result for such a tricky fabric like do you use I was going to use dark thread on the dark sections I think when I do the underarm sleeves I'll do dark thread on the dark sections and maybe that orange khaki combination on the rest. I'm not sure. You'd use a completely different type of stitch to do those underarm ones. So we will see what sort of, yeah, if the front fabric and the back fabric have the same colours in them. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. So, um, now I had to, I pinned it and then I had to just unpin I like to pin it first, then unpin it again and put in the reinforcement because the structural layer sort of creases. So when you fold it down the first time, it finds its place and then you bring it up and you add the other layers and then you put it down again. It's easier to put it down the second time. You know what's the right place and what's the wrong place. So I find it easier to do it that way. And these are the two threads, as I said. They don't look like they would go, but when you've just got a couple of strands of each, it works really well with this fabric. So, yep, and then I did the slow and careful task of hand stitching everything down. And of course, I went um, not just around the edge, but for those tabs, I also sort of pin them down and also tack down edges of the reinforced sections that I'm not sure I'm going to catch the um, when I'm working from the other side. So yeah, but it's, I should probably trim down some of that neon yellow um, netting, but yeah, I don't think I'm going to. I kind of like, yeah, obviously I'm experimenting with a couple of things and oh, I, so I turned the whole jacket in the correct way and this is it from the top. So I've still got those really long pins holding the reinforcement layers in. So you can't really see what it looks like um, because it, they're being, the sh um, upper sleeve section is being held by those pins. But you get a rough idea. I think I will do um, shoulder seam of embellishment. I wasn't sure whether I would or not because there's no actual line in the fabric there. You know how I'm following the lines of the fabric. But I've always wanted to know how if you had a dolman sleeve jacket and you did beading on the actual seam, how well that would age. So I think I'll, I mean, what better opportunity is there? I think I'll do it and then just see over the years how it ages. Anyway, I have to put this aside for the moment so I can go and finish this vintage dress. I know those two red flowers, the bottom two red flowers, look a bit weird at the moment. But once you have the weight of the full skirt, I think they will be fine. I do have a tiny amount left, so I could 
you know, for see, I could actually cut out another front bodice if I wanted to, if I felt like it really needs it, but yeah. And this is me just looking at how many beads I have left. It's a beading tray, and but beading trays traditionally don't actually hold that many beans. So I've just turned it upside down, which is ridiculous, but it's working for me. There are quite a few big ones. So yeah, I think doing those spines along the shoulders, like down, right down to the wrist, will, yeah, will work out fine and use up just the right amount of beads. Okay, I have to go do this. I really think the print on the skirt will balance out those two red blobs that look a bit too intense at the moment. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. And when I finished editing all that, I fully intended to just go straight into the dress. But as soon as I finished all that editing and um, reorganized all the next lot of editing to do, I was like, oh, actually, I'm exhausted. I need a little nap. So that was all the sewing I did. So this is what the dress still looks like. So then I had to post the black and white dress. It's made out of quarters, fat quarters. So there's the front is one fat quarter, the back is of the bodice is one fat quarter. The first tier is two fat quarters, the second tier is four fat quarters, and the bottom, well, I guess you could use eight fat quarters, but I just had this long strip of fabric, so I used that. And I was really happy with that, so I posted that video, but as soon as it went live, um, I don't know, it, um, YouTube did something and it went all glitchy. So then I had to take it offline while YouTube figured out what they'd done. And so I had to post another video and, um, which is this Cinderella blue dress. And these videos, I don't, I, my golden rule is never complain, but oh my gosh, each video takes me so long to do. And video, um, YouTube just like messed up the ads and the ads just kept playing and my, the actual content wouldn't play. And, oh, it's just so annoying. I went to so much effort to make this entire video and an entire dress. And it just, oh, it was so frustrating. Anyway, the yeah, blue dress is fine and the video is fine. So that was fine. So it was just one little glitch. And it's um, another a day, a full day later now, and the glitch in the other episode has f fixed up. So the black and white one is back online now. But it was all very frustrating. Okay, rant over. It is time to get back to this navy blue and orange jacket. So this is how I left it with the large pins in the like the hat pin length pins in the holding the two layers. If it was just me and I wasn't filming, that would be fine, I could work with that. But it's just not gonna work as, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to film the things I have to film. So unfortunately, I cannot cut this corner. I don't recommend anyone cut it unless you're incredibly, incredibly advanced. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna have to sew one line down the middle, going through all the layers, coming back up through them, really slowly and then do one side um, of the edge of the wool and then the other side of the edge of the wool and then I'll go back to the original side and do the edge of the netting and then the other edge of the netting. So you sort of always want to start in the middle and work one side, then a little bit on the other side, then a little bit on the first side, then a little bit on the second side, just so that everything's even. And then there we go. Remember that there's going to be lining over this, so you're never going to see it. So this is just um, structural work. So it's, and I'm going to embellish over it anyway. So it's just putting, keeping everything in place. And yeah, once the lining covers it, nothing is going to actively try and take, uh, you know, um, dislodge the, them. So yeah, gravity will be in your favor once the piece is finished. So yeah, you do have to make them all sit together properly, but just use a um, an even tension stitch. So not too much tension, not too little tension. 
So yeah, and then I did the other side and then it was time to turn the whole thing over and show you what it looks like. And now that I don't have those hat pin sized pins in the, like the shoulder, the top of the sleeve, you can actually see what it's going to look like. And it's so cute. Oh, I love this jacket. It's, I wouldn't normally think of um, orange and navy together. So I sort of bought this just because I thought, oh, it's not my usual, I'll buy it. And um, I might do something interesting with the, you know, pattern matching or something. I don't know. I just thought I should buy it rather than not. And yeah, it's, oh, I found a stitch that you can actually see. <laughs> so I decided to show you. So anyway, um, yeah, so it's done. And now it is time to start stitching on all these I'm going to do the big ones and then I'm going to like just in a layer I'm going to do the big ones and then I'm going to go back and do all the medium size ones so first up I divided most of my remaining large size ones into two boxes and then I tipped one of the boxes in onto my tray and I started just yeah oh and I had to pin the cuff pins back in because I sort of when they annoy me, I take one out and then I take another one out and I end up, you know, the cuff line is there sometimes and then sometimes it's not. So I have to put it back so I can very clearly see um, how long this line here of beading has to be. So then I went along and did the big ones and there's a little bit around the neck that I also did, but I'm going to have to film how I put the lining and the outer jacket together. So yeah, I really don't want any beads around the edge because it's going to be a frustrating enough process trying to film that. Uh, yeah, I just don't need the added obstacles of beads around there. So I'll do the, sew the two layers together, then go back and do a tiny amount of beading around the whole of the neckline. So here is, um, oh, so I've done the original, I've done the big ones. And now I did the same thing with the remaining medium sized beads, two containers, then tipped the container I'm using for this side into the tray. There's also a little bit left over for the under sleeves, the sides and the neckline when I'm finished. So it's not totally half. It's just, you know, I sort of, if you're not sure how much you should leave, just leave a good handful for all the extra bits right at the end. But yeah, or, or two, I just sort of use up all my spares and just keep going until I've used them up. But that's because the reason I embellish largely is to actually use up my massive collection of beads. So, yeah. And here we go. So I'm just sort of going through and doing all the medium ones, just little clusters of beads. And I also have to do tiny bits on the side because, you know, I had to leave room for the sewing machine. And yeah, eventually I got there. So the next thing was to do the cuff finally. So I pinned that into place and then I hand stitched that. And now it's done. I sort of, I guess I was just thinking to myself, so I didn't totally film that process. I'll do it on the other cuff. I'll show you a little bit clearer. Oh, and this is me just showing you after I did the cuff, I went back and I did a couple of extra beads and there's just like literally three, I think I added and it just made such a difference. There were a few holes that looked gaping, but then I just literally added one bead at near the wrist, one in near the elbow and one near the shoulder. And yeah, they, it looks pretty good now. Like I'll give it once the whole jacket is, you know, I've done sewing the sides and the under uh, sleeves. I'll give the whole jacket a look and do more spot checking. But for the most part, I think this side is good for now. As I said, I'm going to leave those little spaces around the neckline just because it's going to be so much easier to sew the lining in to the outer jacket. So now I have to very carefully pack this side up so that I can turn the entire jacket around because it's splayed out like this. It just takes so much more room than one of my jackets normally. It's also bigger than one of my normal jackets because the Vogue 7975 is a very fitted jacket, whereas this is a little bit um, 
well, it's boxier, but also the sleeves kind of have that whatever unfitted bat wingy, whatever it's called. So there's just a lot more. And of course, the sleeves stick straight out, whereas with a fitted jacket, the sleeves are the default is for them to sit straight down. So, yeah, I'm getting there eventually. So I put in the big beads of the second side and then I st so I started from the neckline right down to the wrist and then I'm starting from the wrist going up putting the medium size beads in and there's a few extra sections here that needed bigger beads so I'm kind of glad I did the other side first and got it over with and you know finally had that win of yay one whole side is done. I feel like I can see the light at the end of the tunnel and it's given me the patience to finish all of this. One million years later, here we are. No, it is some time later though. And it is done. Look at these ones here. This is the last bit I did. It's little stacks of three then topped by another one. So I guess it's a stack of four um, seed beads. And they're just all around there. So there are a few little spaces that don't have um, beads on the lines. And I don't know, at that point I was like, yeah, <laughs> there needs to be a little breath in between them. So then I did the cuff and just hand stitched that. And there we go. Now it is time to hand stitch the underarms and the sides together so I just had to pin them into place so that yeah um, you can't sort of do it when they're pinned but you have to pin them to make sure you get everything in you know the two sides matching up correctly so I'm just going to use that figure eight old-fashioned I'm going to do it the traditional way and just do a figure eight stitch so you go in the bottom of one side go up through the top of it then take your thread and your needle and put it between the two bits and go down to the bottom of the other of the other side come up through it and then go down between the two bits to the bottom of the other one and you sort of do a figure eight loop between the two bits um it's like a really it's a traditional thing that people have done for like thousands of years I don't know what it's called but it's just that it's <laughs> That's not very helpful, but I was very tired at this point. I was like, oh, I just want it finished. So I did it and then there's I reinforced it at the end and because um, I like a slit in the back of my cuffs just so that, you know, if I'm typing on my um, keyboard, it sits either side of my hand instead of me sort of having to sit rest my hand on beads. So I just like a... a slash in the cuff so I did one side and then I did the other side and there we go it's done and I was very very tired at this point I'm really happy with it but I kind of think it would be even better if there was a thin line between each of these thick lines so sort of halfway between Okay, I'm stopping for the night because I'm a bit over it. Oh, I did the hem too. So the only thing left to do is the little bits of beading that haven't been done and then the lining. So here is the footage of the jacket with the hem done. I just waited until the next day to get some footage with natural light. And yeah, it's really pretty the way that it is. But uh, yeah, I didn't end up doing the lining I ended up doing yet more beading. So here it is on the mannequin and I just feel like the two orange blobs are a bit too, um, yeah, I don't like them. And I also feel like the beading will age better if there's sort of support structures between, I feel like the squares are too big and like the gaps where there's no beading. I feel like if there's like support beams in between sort of but out of beading then the whole the jacket as a whole will age better. So I've put some pearl tip pins in so you can sort of see what I mean. I'm just going to do a thin lines of beads like both vertical and horizontal in between where the windows of beads are now and I think that would look 
really good. I like what I've done, but I think I'll like it even more if, yeah, I put in more beads. Also, I've got more beads to use up. So I know it's already too much, but in for a penny, in for a pound. I do. It gets to the point, if I wore it like this, people would comment on the beads. Whereas if you sort of double down and do twice as much, people never comment on the beads. It's just so much. People either don't notice or they just, you know, do but don't decide to not comment. I absolutely love this jacket from the side. The sleeves are so beautiful. Normally with the dolman sleeve, the shoulders are a little too rounded. That's kind of the earmark of a dolman sleeve. But because the of the weight of the beads, you can actually see the um the silhouette of it's, it just makes the shoulders sharper rather than round. And I really appreciate that. So this is me doing those second sets of beads. I don't show you a whole lot of um, footage of it, just enough to, if you wanted to do it, to sort of show you how it's done. I also did some beading with um, stacks of beads. So you just put four beads on the needle and then um, you hold the top bead and then put the needle back down through this stack of beads and that's how you do those ones. At this point I hadn't done the back and I'd only done one sleeve, I'd done the left sleeve and there's a few bits on the front here that I haven't done that the side there's a, a vertical line that hasn't been done either but I'm slowly working my way around the whole of the jacket. So once again I'm just putting pins in, the pearl tip pins in where I'm going to bead. I just find it really useful because when I start beading, I sort of go off and I tend to think about something else and I just sort of get into a zone. And yeah, it's really helpful for me to keep the pins in where I need to bead. And that way I've sort of got a touchstone and I can sort of keep thinking about whatever other project I'm thinking about and I can just do the beading sort of um yeah muscle memory sort of thing and a pin is really easy to take out so yeah I find it easy and these are the little stacks of beads they look like a rock sculpture or a little aliens or something I love them Anyway, so there's some of those dotted around the whole thing. So it's pretty much done now. There's a couple of sections that I'll do later, but I'm sort of losing the light. So I decided this was enough for now. And as I said, I will do the lining next week because I've got a, I um, have an injury on my pointer finger. And when you're hand stitching in lining, you sort of need to do, you need to press this certain spot on your finger like with every single stitch so I think I'll just leave it a few days until I've healed my hands have healed a little bit but here we go this is the jacket and I do have some beady beads left so I think there's a bit on the right cuff that needs more beading and at the neckline on both sides there's a little bit of beading that needs to be done so I might do I'll either do it before I put in the lining or just after. I'm not, I'm not sure. I think it would be easier to do it first, maybe. I can't decide. Anyway, so it's pretty much done. I guess when you first look at it, it looks like a big old mess. But when the more you look at it, the more you can discern the little patterns and the recurring motifs and everything. That, I like that. I like that it's just so ridiculously over the top too. And I do think the extra beading will, I love this view, this side view. I just think it looks beautiful. For a dolman sleeve jacket, this has the most beautiful sleeves. So when you make a dolman sleeve jacket, as well as weighting the hem of the, like the torso of the jacket, I would recommend also weighting the cuffs of the sleeves. And that way, because, yeah, dolman sleeve jackets famously sort of round out your shoulders, which isn't, unless you're really broad shouldered, it's not the most flattering. But if you just add a little bit of weight to those cuffs, or in my case, a lot of weight to the sleeves, it just makes them so much more flattering. I love the back. It looks like wisteria or something, or all these vines growing down. 
I love it. It is completely over the top and ridiculously overbeaded. I know that, but, um, you know, <laughs> a lot of my jackets are. And I just think this is a great, this is an awesome use of these beads. I never thought I would. Sometimes I make a jacket and I'm like, wow, that is not something I ever saw myself making. And this is one of those. Anyway, that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you've been inspired to do some beading. Okay, maybe not this much beading. It is a lot of beading. But yeah, just in general, I think beads, beading is awesome. I am a little concerned about how I'm going to store this jacket long term because dolman sleeve jackets don't hang on a coat hanger very well. And over the long term, I generally keep my beaded jackets flat in a like a storage box but because this one is dolman sleeves dolman sleeves tend to want to stick their arms out whereas um no, standard jackets that are fitted and have set in sleeves their default is for the sleeves to just lie against the body so yeah i think i'm going to make a roll like a fabric roll and put it in the sleeves and that way and then sort of fold the sleeves over the body of the jacket. I think that might be the best way to store it. Anyway, thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this unusual jacket. We'll be back to normal program. I think next tweed jacket I make will just be a plain fitted tweed jacket. No beading. Well, I mean, eventually there will be beading. Of course there will. That's why I make these jackets. But yeah, in the episode, we'll just be making the jacket from start to finish. Anyway, thanks for watching. Happy sewing.